Some time ago, maybe at the beginning of the year of 2022, maybe the end of 2021, I'm not exactly sure, but I had some Hebrew Israelites on. You're going to find out why I do not really speak to the Hebrew Israelites. These are people that do not tend to understand either because they don't want to or because they are incapable. I'm not trying to be belittling, but it just is what it is. You, it's hard to have a conversation with them because for them, in many cases, they feel like, or they at least project this, that the loudest voice is the one that matters. The one that tries to dominate the conversation is the one that is going to win. And so I'm not really willing or wanting or desiring to have a conversation with someone who either doesn't have the ability to understand or doesn't want to. I think maybe it's, maybe it's a little bit of both. I put out a, a couple of videos dealing with the Hebrew Israelites. One, that uh, it was not meant to be all encompassing in the argument, but just giving an example of why black people solely are Hebrew Israelites because the Bible speaks of in Romans 11 that there's a spirit of stupor given to Israel, that there has been this partial hardening, not to state that, and I said so in the video, not to state that all Jews, there, are, there will be no Jew that will come to Christ, but for the most part, the overwhelming majority of, of Jews in, uh, in the world are not going to come. That's what the Bible says. But what do they do? They went to, well, what about DNA and this and that and the blacks and, and African who are Jews and so forth. That wasn't the point. The point was to say that blacks in America, if they are the real Jews, then why do by and large black, people's, black people do not reject Christ? That's not to say that black people are actually all Christians. That wasn't the point. But again, it's, a, it's an argument that they either are not willing or capable to understand. I've had some other issues, things that I've said about them such as their little prophecy that they think they fulfill, that we fulfill as black people out of Deuteronomy 28. But what about eating the flesh of our children? I don't recall blacks doing so when they came here to America. But that being stated, having a conversation with them is rough, difficult. Now, there are people that do that and I think do it well. I'm just not one who really wants to do so. Now, when they did come on before, I thought that they just did not handle themselves well at all. As a matter of fact, so much so that there are even videos where their other compadres did videos stating that they should have done a better job in handling themselves and said that this was an obvious answer here or there and they didn't look good. Well, I don't think that they ever do. I don't care if it's the top or the bottom of the Hebrew Israelites. I don't care which sect it is, whether it's the IUIC, I think, the GM, GSM, I'm not sure the different names, but there really is no point in having conversation with someone who is not going to listen. All right, Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Kakwadash. Double honors unto the, to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach and rule well in all truth and sincerity. Right, Shalom, one, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect house of David, which consists of the 12 tribes of Israel, which consists of you so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right. So we got uh, yet another reprobate, reprobate contending pretty much, all right, for these... Um, Edomites, all right, the so-called white man, all right, and this video is, uh, the video you saw, it's on YouTube, it's called, um, uh, Ignorance of Hebrew Israelites, it's, and the channel is Smart Christian's channel, and I think this guy's name is, uh, Corey or something like that, but yeah, man, he, uh, he basically saying that he said he said some stuff in this video, but the main part I want to get that he said is about um, that we claim, you know, we're the Jews, you know, we're the Israelites because we fit the curses. But he goes into uh, basically um, Deuteronomy 28, 53 and Leviticus 26 and 29 is about the uh, about the Israelites eating the flesh of their children. And he says that uh, that that didn't happen, basically, or that 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 doesn't uh, apply to us. And he says that um, as you heard in the video, he said that it didn't happen in America, all right. But it ain't it ain't talking about America, all right. 
when you go to the curses, all right, in Deuteronomy and Leviticus, all of it is not talking about America, all right? The curses fell upon us at all different times, all right? So we're just going to play a little bit, and I got I got the part saved you know, on my phone that I want to play, all right? But we're just going to go, um, we're going to go um, play the video again, and as always, we're going to uh, interject as we go, all right, and break it down through the scriptures, all right, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. Some time ago, maybe at the beginning of the year of 2022, maybe the end of 2021, I'm not exactly sure, but I had some Hebrew Israelites on. You're going to find out why I do not really speak to the Hebrew Israelites. These are people that do not tend to understand either because they don't want to or because they are incapable. I'm not trying to be belittling, but it just is what it is. You, it's hard to have a conversation with them because for them, in many cases, they feel like, or they at least project this, that the loudest voice is the one that matters, the one that tries to dominate the conversation. And, you know, if you go watch the whole video, you know, I ain't going to play the whole video, of course, but if you go watch the um, whole video, you know, on YouTube, he was talking to some Israelites. I, I didn't, um, I don't know none of them. I accept uh, the guy from Sakar, not the head, but the guy right up under the head. The guy right up under uh, Alazar. I think his name is Deacon Hakal, something like that. You know, the brown skinned guy that always wears the, uh, the head wraps or whatever. But yeah, he was, he was up there. All right. And basically, you know, I ain't going to go into too much detail about this because I want to go ahead and get into the lesson. But he was confining the, the the Israelites, basically that he had up there. He and he's basically applying that to the, all the Hebrew Israelites. All right, and as you can hear, as you heard, all uh, right, he mentioned um, IUIC and GMS. Well, he said GSM, but you know, he of course, you know, he meant GMS. But yeah, the guys that he had on there, I mean, they basically, you know, I don't know how long they've been in the truth or whatever. But he, you know, he was basically. <laughs> You know, hit them with stuff that, you know, they didn't know. All right. Pretty much ba basic stuff. You know, not, not that, you know, all Hebrew Israelites is going to know, you know, the, the, um, everything getting the scriptures. But he was basically, you know, giving them, you know, trivial, trivia questions all right, from the scriptures and they ain't know it. All right. But, you know, that's, that's, that's neither here or there. But I want to go ahead and get into this. All right. So let's play it back a little bit. I forgot where I was, what he was saying. But it just is what it is. You, it's hard to have a conversation with them because for them, in many cases, they feel like, or they at least project this, that the loudest voice is the one that matters. The one that tries to dominate the conversation is the one that is going to win. So I'm not really willing or wanting or desiring to have a conversation with someone who either doesn't have the ability to understand or doesn't want to. I think maybe it's maybe it's a little bit of both. I put out a, a couple of videos dealing with the Hebrew Israelites. One that uh, it was not meant to be all encompassing in the argument, but just giving an example of why black people solely are Hebrew Israelites because the Bible speaks of in. All right, and we ain't black. All right, we're the Hebrew Israelites, right? The twelve tribes, all right, from. The tribe of uh, Judah all the way down to the tribe of Issachar, all right, from the Negroes, from the so-called Negroes down to the so-called Mexicans, all right, and you know, this just, it, to me, it seems like it's always, you know, these, these, these Negroes, all right, razor shade, bald head, all right, no, no beard, all right, and it seems like these are always the ones that's coming against the truth, man, and they contending, you know, they come against the truth coming against the Hebrew Israelites are harder than these Edomites do, man. These black Christians. That's why the black Christian church is the biggest joke going, man. All right, because you got niggas like this that want to do the bidding of the so-called uh, white man. All right. It just seems like I just want to, you know, throw that in there because it seems like it's always these, these kind of guys, man. You know, I just found that, you know, funny or whatever. Oh solely are Hebrew Israelites because the Bible speaks of in Romans 11 that there's a spirit of stupor given to Israel that there has been this partial hardening not to state that and I said so in the video not to state that 
all Jews. There are, there will be no Jew that will come to Christ. But for the most part, the overwhelming majority of, of Jews in uh, in the world are not going to come. That's what the Bible says. But what do they do? They went to well. What about DNA and this and that and the blacks and, and African who are Jews and so forth? That wasn't the point. Right, and we don't we don't go into all that. You know. You know the. the the, the Israelites with 100% truth, you know, which is great millstone, all right, they don't teach about all that, you know, DNA and all that nonsense, man, all right, because we believe that we're the Israelites through faith, all right, and through the scriptures, all right, all right, we identify directly with the curses, man, we're the only people, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that are under the curses, man, all right, no other race of people. All right, no other nation on the face of the earth has gone through all right the curses, all right, and that's Deuteronomy twenty-eight verses fifteen through sixty-eight. Man, that applies to us and all of us, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All right, we are the real um, children of Israel, man. All right, the true Jews, the Israelites, the Lord's chosen people. All right, that's how we that's how we know that we um it, we're Israel. The point was to say that Blacks in America, if they are the real Jews, then why? Do by and large, black people's black people do not reject Christ. It's not to say that black people are actually all Christians. That wasn't the point. But all right, <laughs> and um, the reason that most of our people don't reject, you know, when Christ is not His name, but you know, of course, His name is Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, the Anointed Savior, the Anointed Deliverer. But they don't reject Christ because that's an idol, man. All right, Jesus Christ is an idol. That's not the re the one, the real true power. All right, the the true Son, the one and only begotten Son of the Most High Yahweh. All right, which is um so called black man. All right, from the tribe of Judah. All right, he would be uh called the so called Negro if he was here today, man. All right, man. The reason that most of our people don't reject that false image is because that's one of the curses, man. All right, that we're going to serve um, idols. All right, let's get that real quick. All right, and we can take that, take that off. All right, let's get... And this is in the curses, man. All right, which one is it? I should have wrote this down, but I figured I'd be able to find it easy. Uh, that's a chef serve. God's which did thou know how father them. Here we go. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Uh, and the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shah, shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even to the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. All right. And the wood is Christianity, man. All right. That's what that's 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 white boy Jesus, man. All right. That's why most of our people don't reject it. All right, because we are uh, discontinued from our heritage. And um and then only um a third is gonna um return the um hopeful elect the house of David only the elect is gonna return to the um one true power all right, to our true heritage which is Israel and our one true power all right Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah the power the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob only a small portion all right of our people is gonna return man so that's why most of our people don't reject Christ but again it's a, it's an argument that. They either are not willing or capable to understand. I've had some other issues, things that I've said about them, such as their little prophecy that they think they fulfill, that we fulfill as black people out of Deuteronomy 28. But what about eating the flesh of our children? I don't recall blacks doing so when they came here to America. But All right, and this is the part I want to get. All right, this 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 what the lesson all right, is based on, all right? Um... The, the eating the uh, the Israelites eating the flesh of their children. Let me go back a little bit. I had some other issues, things that I've said about them, such as their little prophecy that they think they fulfill that we fulfill as black people out of Deuteronomy twenty eight. But what about eating the flesh of our children? I don't recall blacks doing so when they came here to America. But that being stated, having a conversation with them is rough, difficult. Now there are people that do that, and I think. All right, so let's. <laughs> Let's get into it, man. All right, and I was already here, all right? <laughs> That's the spirit. All right. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 53. 
and thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh, shall thy power hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. All right. <laughs> And it clear, the scriptures clearly say in the siege, man, that's not, it ain't talking about our America when we got to America. All right. You know, you, the Bible gives you two accounts, all right, of sieges that happened to our people. All right. One was the um, siege of um, Samaria, right, by the Syrians. All right. And one was the siege of uh, Jerusalem, all right, by the Romans. And, um, you know, around 7 AD, anywhere from, you know, 67 to 73 AD, all right, and this is also in um, Leviticus, all right, Leviticus 26, was it, 29, all right, the book of Leviticus chapter 26, verse 29, and you shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat, and I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my, sh and my soul shall, shall, Abhor you, and I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation, and I will not smell the savor, savor of your sweet odors, and I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it, and I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. All right, so there you go, man. That's right. That's talking about uh, 70 AD. All right. So let's get the first siege, all right, um, like I said, which is the siege of um, Samaria, all right, by the um, Syrians, all right, the Aramaeans, all right, let's get uh, 2 Kings, chapter 6. Let's start at verse. All right, and this whole chapter is good. All right, the first, the first, um, you know, the top part of the chapter is going into um, Elisha. All right, when they was being uh, basically, you know, chased by the king of Syria. And Elisha had great faith, man, and he asked the old Lord to open the eyes of the men that were with him, that they may have faith. All right, but let's start at verse um, 24, all right, this book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, verse 24. And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria, all right, in the siege, all right. Verse 25, and there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. Yeah, that's that famine, man. All right. You know, dung was going, going, going for, you know, five pieces of silver, man. And we're coming into these times again, man, All right, upon the fall of all Babylon. All right, that great famine. Verse 26, and as the king of Israel was passing upon the wall, there cried a woman to you saying, Help, O my Lord, O king. And I think the king was uh, Jehoram, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Verse 27, And he said, If the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah, do, do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? All right. And verse 28, And the king said unto her, what, what aileth thee? And she answered, This woman's, this woman said unto me, give thy son that we may eat him today and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we bought my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she, and she had hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall and the people looked and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his, upon his flesh. All right, so there you go, man. That's what it's talking about, that we're going to eat, the, that the Israelites are going to eat the flesh of their children, right, their sons and daughters. All right, that ain't, it is not talking about our America. All right. And let's get, um, you know, this ain't going to be too long. 
You know, let's get um all right, let's get the other siege. All right. Um which you how was y'all all right prophesied about man? All right. Now first let's get let's get lamentations. All right, let's get lamentations. Chapter two. Verse 20. All right, and this is a prophecy. This is the book of Lamentation, chapter 2, verse 20. Behold, O Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shah, and consider to whom thou hast done this. All right, shall the woman eat their fruit and the children of a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? All right, and the children of a span long is basically newborns. All right. <laughs> Verse 21, the young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. Many virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pitied. Thou hast cast as in a solemn day my tails round about so that in the day of the Lord's anger none escape nor remain. Those that I have swaddled and brought up have my hand. So like if those that I have swaddled and brought up have my enemy consumed. All right, and this is this, this is um the same thing that Yahweh shall proph prophesied about. All right, the um the siege of uh, Jerusalem by the Romans. All right, because it says um uh, <laughs> right here in verse twenty one, the young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. Many verses and young men are falling by the sword. All right, which Yahweh shall prophesy, man, that he said that um Israel shall fall by the sword. All right. And we're gonna get that, we're gonna get that account too. All right, well, Yahweh shall prophesy. We're gonna get that. Let's go and let, let's let's go to um chapter four. All right, also still in um still in Lamentations, the book of Lamentations, chapter four, verse 10. The hands of the pitiful woman have sought in their own children. They were they were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. The Lord had accompanied his fury and had poured out his fierce anger and had kindled a fire in Zion and, and it had devoured the foundations thereof. All right, so there you go, man. All right, verse 10 again, the hands of the pitiful women had sought in their own children. There were the meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. All right, so there you go, man. All right. <laughs> so, so, so guys like this, man, all right, contending for these Edomites, all right, don't know, don't know um, the scriptures, man. They don't know secular history. All right, it ain't talking about America. All right, it's 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 talking about the sieges. All right, mainly the siege of um, Jerusalem in seven A.D. by the Romans. All right, that and I said so in the video, not to state that all Jews. Um, that's what the Bible says. But what do they do? Jews and so forth. That wasn't the point. The point was to say that blacks in America, if they are the real Jews, then why do by and large black people's black people had some other issues, things that I've said about them, such as their little prophecy that they think they fulfill, that we fulfill as black people out of Deuteronomy 28. But what about eating the flesh of our children? I don't recall blacks doing so when they came here to America. Because <laughs> it ain't talking about America, man. All right. It, it ain't. It's not talking about America, all right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta do some research, Jake, and get into the scriptures. All right, these Christians, especially these so-called black Christians, think they know the scriptures, man, and they don't. They don't know nothing. All right, let's get um. Well, how was y'all prophesied about the siege? All right, the fall of uh, Jerusalem by the Romans. Let's get Luke nineteen. And this is in red, all right? So these are the words of Yahweh Shah. All right, the book of St. Luke, chapter 19, verse 43. For the day shall come upon thee that, that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they sh shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. All right, <laughs> And they dug in, in the, the Romans, right? These Edomites might dug the trenches that what uh, you know was true was trapped in. All right, nothing could come into the city and nothing could go out, man. 
And that's in the in our um forefathers and foremothers are right there were starving because no food could come in, man. Alright, so they began to eat their children. Alright. Let's go over to verse uh twenty one. So lucky, let's go over to chapter twenty one, still in uh Saint Luke. Alright. This is the book of Saint Luke, chapter tw chapter twenty one, verse twenty. All right, again, this is in red, the words of Yahweh And when ye shall see Jer Jerusalem compared with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then, then let them that are, in that are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For well, these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. All right. And then we read it back in Lamentations, man. All right. It was, it was prophecy. But woe unto them that are, that are with child and woe unto them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. All right. Which said in Lamentations, all right, that are in distress are, you know, are, um, the Israelites ate the flesh of their children. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trotting down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So there you go, man. So, all right, so during the siege, all right, of Jerusalem in 70 AD, all right, the Israelites, all right, the Jews, you know, all of the tribes were there, but it was primarily the Jews, all right, the um all right, the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which was collectively in those days um, called the Jews. All right, the um, the southern kingdom. All right, which was in um, Jerusalem, man, during the siege. All right, so let's go. Um, let's get the uh, the account. All right, in the um, in the um, in the Josephus. All right. Well, um, well, the Israelites ate the flesh of their children. All right, during the siege, during the siege of um, Jerusalem. All right. Let me see what I can. I think it's called War of the Jews. So, lock your bell with me for a second. Jews. Right, let's see what we. Yep. All right, and this you know this long, so I'm gonna I'm gonna see how much I'm gonna read. If it's a lot, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna read kind of fast, cause you know I don't want to make this you know too long. But then again, you know the edific edification got to come out. All right, so this is in the Josephus. All right, War of the Jews, Volume Six. And I think it's in uh. The third chapter. All right, yep. The third chapter and the fourth, um, what well, the, the fourth, all right, paragraph. All right. All right, so this is in the, um, Josephus. All right, volume six, volume six, the war of the Jews. All right, the third chapter and the fourth, uh, paragraph. There was a certain woman that dwelt beyond Jordan. Her name was Mary. Her father was Eleazar of the of the village Bethazar, which signifies the house of Hyssop. She was eminent for her family and her wealth and had fled away to Jerusalem with the rest of the multitude and was with them besieged therein at this time. The other effects of this woman had been already seized upon. Such, I mean, as she had brought with her out of Perea and removed to the city, what she had treasured up besides, as also what food she had contrived to say, had been also carried off by the rapacious guards. All right, that's the siege, man. All right, so our people didn't have food, who came every day running into her house for that purpose. This put the poor woman into a very, into a very great passion, and by the frequent reproaches and imprecations, she cast at these rapacious villains, she had provoked them to anger against her, but none of them, either out of the indignation she had raised against herself or out of the salakia, or out of commiseration of her case, would take away her life. And if she found any food, she perceived her labors were for others and not for herself. And it was now become impossible for her 
for her anyway to find any more food. While the famine pierced through her very bowels and marrow, when also her passion was fired to a degree beyond the famine itself, nor did she consult with anything but with her passion and the necessity she was in, she then attempted a most unnatural thing. And snatching up her son, which was a child sucking at her breast, all right, the newborn children, all right, the prophecy, man, all right, the scriptures 100%, you know, spot on accurate, man, dead spot on, man. She said, O oh, thy miserable infant, for whom shall I preserve thee in this war, this famine, and this addition? As to the war with the Romans, if they preserve our lives, we must be slaves. This famine also will destroy us even before that slavery comes upon us. Yet, are these seditious rogues more terrible than both the other? Come on, be, be thou my fool, and be thou a fury to these seditious wallets, and a byword to the world, which is all that is now wanting to complete the calamities of us Jews. As soon as she had said this, she slew her son, and then roasted him, and eat the one half of him, and kept the other half by her concealed. Upon this, the seditious came in presently, and smelling the horrid scent of this food, they threatened her that they would cut off her that they would cut her throat immediately if she did not show them what food she had gotten ready. She replied that she had saved a very fine portion of it for them, and withal uncovered what was left of her son. Hereupon they were seized with horror and amazement of mind, and stood astonished at the sight when she said to them, "This is my own son, and what have been." This was mine own doing. Come, eat of this food, for I have eaten of it myself. Do not you pretend to be either more tender than a woman or more compassionate than a mother. But if you be so scrupulous and do abominate this my sacrifice, as I have eaten the one half, let the rest be reserved for me also. After, the, after which those men went out trembling, being never so much afraid at anything as they were at this. And with some difficulty, they left the rest of that meat to the mother, upon which the whole city was full of this horrid action immediately. And while everybody laid this miserable case before their own eyes, they trembled, as if this unheard of action had been done by themselves. So those that, like you, so those that were thus distressed by the famine were very desirous to die. And those already dead were seen happy because they had not lived long enough either to hear or to see such miseries. So there you go, man. <laughs> All right. So that's what it's that's what that's what Deuteronomy twenty eight and fifty three is talking about, man. It ain't talking about America. All right. So let's go get that again real quick, and you know we're gonna get ready. I'm um, uh, get ready to close it out. Like I said, I just want to bring this out for edification's sake. All right. Deuteronomy 28, verse 53. And thou shalt eat the fruit. And this was one of the curses. So, like, let me go get verse 15 real quick. All right, because this was one of the curses, all right, that would come upon our people for disobedience and rebellion and idol worship. All right, Deuteronomy um, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, shall thy power to observe to do all his commandments and the statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And once the curses was um, us eating the flesh of our, the Israelites eat, eating the flesh of their children, man, in famine. All right, verse 53, And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh, shall thy power hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee. All right, and let's go get it again one more time, all right, real quick in Leviticus. All right, because this one goes into a little, a little more detail. All right, Leviticus 26 and 29. This one goes into a little more details about the siege, man. All right, the siege of Jerusalem by the Romans in 70 AD. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. And I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols. And my soul shall abhor you. And I will make the cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And that's what, that's what happened, man. All right. And your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw the sword after you. And your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. And that's what happened during the siege of um, Jerusalem in 70 AD, man. 
All right. So it ain't talking about um America. That's what it was talking about, man. All right. That was that was one of the curses. And that happened to the Jews, man. That happened to the Israelites, our, our people. All right. All right. You know, some of our people fled. All right. Escaped down in Africa, you know, just to, just to be just to be taken to America in um uh, in ships, man. All right, which is Deuteronomy two eight and sixty eight. All right, so see, you you got you got you got guys like this, man, contending for contending. All right, for these Edomites. All right, doing their bidding. All right, just spewing their rhetoric. All right, about us, man, saying that we don't saying that saying that you know we don't fit you know the curses. But the curses um clearly point to us and only us, man, the so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans. All right, the real Israelites, all right, the real Jews, all right, the Lord's chosen people. And they and, and, and this and they, and they they so off, man, because they say stuff like, you know, Deuteronomy 28 and 68, is it that ain't, you know, that ain't talking about, you know, the so-called Negroes coming to America in slavery. But you know, they say stuff like this that Deuteronomy 28 and 53. It's talk, but that's you know that's talking about America. But twenty eight, uh, Deuteronomy twenty eight and six day us coming, in, us going into slavery on ships. That ain't talking about America. You know that that's talking about you know going back, going back to each. You know they try to pull that in the third Maccabees, all right. But then, but when it comes to Deuteronomy twenty eight and fifty three, they'll say that's talking about America, which is which is which is foolishness, man. All right, you know so you know and guys like this gonna be destroyed at least they repent. All right, and that's our and that's our people, especially in these times, man. You know, they fighting harder than than Esau, man, than these Edomites, all right, against the Hebrew Israelites, all right, and they're gonna be destroyed, man. At least they repent, you know. So I just want to bring this out, you know. Hopefully, this was edifying through the spirit and power of Yah by Shem Yah all right, by Shem Rukak All right, I want to give double honors to the to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, teaching real well and our truth and sincerity. I want to say peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. You know, keep pushing. We almost out of here. You know, we just got to endure. All right, we in um, we in some very serious times. All right, this is the uh, this is twenty twenty three, the hopeful year of all the prophecies. Uh, the hopeful year that all of the prophecies will come to pass. All right, deemed by Elder Apostle Tar. All right, and hopefully this is the year, man, because we ready to get out of here, man. All right, <laughs> so you know, hopefully this was edifying. All right. I want to say peace and blessings, you know, shalom to the hopeful elect, the house of David. All right, DTA, a Baba Ball. Shalom.